Today, we have a little gem of a piece by Maurice Ravel, written in 1909, called Minuet on the Name of Haydn. So it was a commission to celebrate Haydn's centennial, and the condition of the commission was to um, base it on Haydn's name. So this is what Ravel did. Uh, he took Haydn's name, H-A-Y-D-N, and he assigned a note from the scale based on the alphabet. So H in German is B natural. So H, A, and then Y we don't have in the scale. So he decided D, Y, and then D itself again. And then N, again, we don't have in the scale. So he just decided G. like a tune that could be in a nursery rhyme, right? Very innocent. And he harmonized it as so. <laughs> and he makes a variations on this. So this could go down. It could be backward, a retrograde. And eventually, it could be an inversion, like a mirror image. So what goes up, goes down, so on and so forth. Um, OK, so this is what I think the sentiment Ravel put behind this piece. Um, even when we look at other composers of the time, there is this sort of nostalgia for the lost days, the olden days, that, you know, things were better in the good old days um, than how we have it today. It's a romantic um, thinking about the past, I think, that we generally share as humans. But so, and he expresses this beautifully um, in this piece. And that's what I love about it, I think. Haydn is also known, uh, was known during his lifetime as the papa, and he's the, you know, father of the string quartet, blah, blah, blah. He, he's sort of this, how we think of it, think of Haydn is, you know, he's this sort of very stable, humorous, um, uh, one of the father figures of the Western classical music. And so, so there's that yearning for that figure, for that, you know, along with the yearning for the past. Um, so I think it's captured beautifully, even within that statement of Haydn's name in the beginning. He starts out simply with a lone note in piano with an accent, H, and then a sort of a two note descending figure, like a sigh. Again, lost in one note and then accented a chord that Haydn wouldn't have used, but, and then he goes up, like Haydn went up. Like, where are you, Papa? And then forte, accent, where are you, Papa? And then decrescendo to back to piano again. So it's the, the restatement of the Haydn's name. Exactly the same way in piano with the same accents, but this time the first note is not a lone lost note, but a seventh chord that becomes a ninth, and then and then same thing again with the decrescent, do, do, do. and then same yearning, where are you, Papa? But this time mezzo forte. So that was the first 16 measures. Now, Haydn's name again, but this time in the left hand. And then instead of going up, it goes down with this 
ascending. This figure with the mordant. Mezzo forte. So this is our retrograde. Um, Do you get it? Um, so he's just taking the last note and going to the first note. This is the original theme, right? And then, so going it backward. N D Y A H. So H A Y D N. N D Y A H. Apex of the piece. And then mezzo forte with a decrescendo. So it's like the theme, except it's semitone up, except for the first node. It's a little bit painful. And then mezzo forte. This is a straight um, retrograde, right? So, um, N, D, Y, A, H. And then the semitone up with, in piano. So, semi. And then, this is the really magical part of the piece. It's all pianissimo for eight measures, or actually almost to the end of the piece. Bass goes away here, leaving us suspended without the the assuring bass. Where are you, Papa? Retenu, slowing down. and then quarter rest. 